and wait for it to do its shift. And there. Okay. All right. Day 90 of 100 days of visibility. There's something almost surreal of being in the home stretch here. I don't have a, a particular thing live right now. I'm just hopping on going, okay, let me find out what happens. I'm open in the space here. I guess it's not quite true. There's there. A day off from any kind of trying to do stuff on the inside. Uh, and then see how easily everything flowed yesterday. <laughs> And then, like, getting back to work, but noticing, oh, well, actually, uh, there's something important to take from the ease, as I'm speaking very abstractly. And there's, there's this quality of how am I orienting to both the charge that I feel the sort of activation and struggle and the difficulty. And um, how much I'm rolling into the struggle of it. I'm wanting to go, I keep wanting to go meta here and there's, there's something I'm observing by the way that I'm showing up <clears throat> and what I'm saying here, being in this immensely abstract space, I think I think it actually is going to be much more grounded for me to to touch on where the energy is most alive for me right now. I just watched a, um, a Stoa session on uh, uh, the like, two people that I used to interact with a fair bit, uh, um, the people who run a blog called Less Wrong. <laughs> and, and just brought up a lot of old feelings, uh, old frustrations. I was feeling really, um, it's different. I can feel the, this quality like smoke coming off of my heart from it. And these impulses to vent the energy into my mind. Boy, do I have arguments. Um, but it's uh, wicked. The way I want to do that is wicked. It's not what I want to do, and it's not kind to me. I'm feeling a lot of this energy and noticing this quality of uh, what feels like uh, unassailable arguments, but now I can see through them really clearly. And I, I, when I say see through them, I don't mean just see why they're wrong. I can feel more of the heart behind it and what is obfuscating those, those hearts. Um, the whole community there has a huge amount of energy placed into saving the world. Almost everything is about saving the world. Um, in very important ways, I helped to build it. A lot of the reason it nucleated the way it did was because the um, the company I built, the Center for Applied Rationality, I built with others, um, encouraged this very diverse community. Um, hey, Rob. Um, encouraged this really diverse community spread across the world um, certainly in the United States, but it, people from around the world to come to the Bay Area. There was this um, frustration a lot of different communities had that um, our workshops, CPAR's workshops, kept sucking their best people out. They would send people to us to be trained so that they could go and lead rationality discussions. And what would happen instead is that they would decide to move to the Bay Area. <laughs> uh, not universally, but it was common enough that even from places like uh, Melbourne, and uh, Berlin, like these are like, like people from pretty far away would find ways to uh, interact more with the Bay Area. Of course, the United States has problems with non-United States citizens living here, but 
and lots of complication. It feels really strange to feel all of that technical stuff, like all the technical mind stuff booting up there. Hmm. <clears throat> so the doing all of this pull of energy for building a community centered around this focus on saving the world. The, the arguments that there's something to save it from and that it takes a kind of intelligence to address it, it feels very strong, very unassailable. I have learned how to see through it for myself. And because of that, I, I am unpersuaded anymore. And there's a lot of emotion and still stored in my body. I'm just learning how to be able to stay with the full charge of it. Of um, having been in a lot of emotional pain um, from trying to connect and finding that that wasn't available that there were important things that I could see that were inaudible because I didn't know how to translate them into the rationality framework. In retrospect, I think the problem is that there's a part of me that is um, something like addicted to being misunderstood. That's not quite the right way of saying it. Something more like Part of me can feel its own validation by feeling others misunderstand me and me being frustrated and certain. And uh, getting to bump into a, a, a community that is based almost entirely on living in the mind and viewing anything that isn't mind as dangerous and needing to be modeled in the mind in order to be trusted. Um, like some of the best uses of mind given that constraint around, but still completely alienated from the flesh. As completely alienated from being carnal creatures as it's possible to be while being a physical community. The, the paradox of that, and, and I don't think there it was, it was fully felt. Um, but it was definitely present. Like I've, I've never seen higher rates of depression in a community or of burnout. And a lot of people would report loneliness while living in group houses surrounded by like-minded people. It's, it's kind of nuts. So there's, I, I, I suspect that the discomfort that I'm feeling is me, like it's, it's this twisting thing that happens, especially in my heart, and it and it sort of aggravates this sense of smoke wanting to come off the chest. Being willing to be with it, by which I mean, on feeling the sensations rather than going into theory, helps it to move and gives me space. I didn't have the capacity to do that before. I have a lot more room to do it now. I can even talk about it and still be with the sensation. Not perfectly, but it's, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm definitely getting there. Being able to move very intense feelings of pain or rage or sadness while fully engaged with what's going on around me. That feels really good. There's a cramp that still happens in feeling something of. A lot of these people I would have considered friends, and there's a level at which I still feel a kind of betrayed. Some a lot more than others. Some actively betrayed me. And uh, for that, there is. Uh, there's a lot of charge in for me to work through for that. So, um, blaming them and being angry at them doesn't actually help. Um, and it's like there's a lot of work to do there. And there's a kind of um, 
but for the most part, there's a kind of a much more passive feeling, a much more um, we can't meet you where you are because here is some logic about why our ideas are right. Just be better. Um, you know, it's so slippery. I can, I can hear and I'm talking in the way that I'm holding it. There's a way where I'm being accurate, but I'm still bringing in this kind of um, uh, drama triangle energy. I chose to be in that community for seven years because I wanted to save the world. And I ignored the signals that there was something wrong with how I was orienting to it and how they were orienting to it. So what in me wanted to ignore the signals, just to double down on the perspective, just saying because I'm trying to save the world begs the question, why did I need to grasp onto that frame? If the frame was wrong, how did I know to trust it over my experience of what was obviously true at a moment-to-moment -moment level? It still affects my thinking. It still is, um, it still is corrupting details of how I'm showing up. So that's really active in me right now. I'm just watching how much how much I want to blame others for my own ignoring habits. My own habits of ignoring, that's a little better. And something funny about doing this work here, um, part of me wants to track, oh, I don't, I'm not, I don't actually want to stir drama, I'm just trying to show up and be in the middle of myself. So it's like finding out what happens when I open up, apparently right now it's a mess. Um, and there's also, there's also an element of, I found out just doing the work really hard doesn't actually open me up. And a lot of this has to do with having enough openness and sensitivity to fully feel things and let them pass through me. Mm. Yeah, so I guess right now I'm, I'll just be a mess. <laughs> Some part of me wants to be embarrassed here, like, oh, come on, I'm like at 90% through this whole series. Shouldn't I be more advanced or something? It's really odd for those pieces of the mind to still play those tales. They don't make any sense. It's all empty. Anyway, I... I don't feel open enough to be able to show up with more clarity than this. And I think I'm just going to loop if I try to um, say more. So I'm going to wrap this up here. So if you, you watched this far, thanks for watching.